No. There must be something else. Anna, no. listen to me. Anna. No. There must be something. I need $18,000 in 10 days. Jesus Christ, Anna. You're not a US citizen. No. I don't want anyone to get hurt. There's other ways of doing it. We don't have a choice. They are working with the local law enforcement. <laughs> they know where you work. They know where you live. Now with you there, we can keep working, build on the parts. I can't, I can't go back. And one of the stories we came across was um, a woman, a young girl named Indira, who was who is a dreamer who was going to um, college uh, to be a doctor, and she was having a hard time finding, you know, federal aid. And there are all these sort of challenges, and it just got Andrew thinking about. Um, different ways we can tell this story about about what sort of things would you do in name in the in the name of your children in the name of watching them succeed you know um and then he kind of came up with this idea of of what anna goes through and i don't want to give anything away either but what she ultimately decides to do um it's not a it's not a right or wrong thing it's just a story of what happens when you're backed against a corner and what will you what won't you do to protect your children and right and anna is a good person i mean she yeah. works two jobs you know <laughs> and yeah. just when she gets this bombshell uh she has to do something to provide for her family for her daughter and yeah. she tries to do the right thing. That's what I love about her. She goes to the bank. She's approved for a bank loan. And as soon as yeah. you find out she's not a citizen, I mean, they literally almost throw her out the front door. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's not an uncommon story, especially right now. Um, you're actually saying, we made the movie a couple years ago. It was 2018 when we finished filming it. But now with everything that's happening, you're seeing, you know, so many people who are already living paycheck to paycheck, you know, proud people, people who are working two, three jobs, jobs that are literally putting food on our tables that we can't survive without this type of work. And now you're seeing so much of it is like, what, what can I do? I'm not, I'm not uh, um, eligible for, you know, government aid. I can't work right now. What can I do? What can I do? You get to a point where, yeah, I mean, you're desperate. And she really did. I think, I think her intentions were, as they are in many, in many of these stories, she was proud, she was working hard, she was doing what she was supposed to do, but it was paycheck to paycheck, not enough to put your child through college, you and know? There were two particular scenes where the night before she decided to do the ultimate deed, which we mm -hmm. would say, she had <laughs> that scene where she's laying in bed and just had that look of panic mm -hmm. on her face. And she also had another scene after they went to the motel room, you know, after yeah. she had, she grabbed her daughter on the run and she had that same look again where her face was just like, you know, just, there's no yeah. way she could have slept. And I mean, that was really powerful. I just remembered that. Yeah. Thank you. It was, it was nice. I mean, Andrew really kind of, um, he was really good about letting the, the moments breathe and letting us really see inside of her. And I, you know, I have two children, so it wasn't hard for me to get into that headspace and to think about, to let my mind just sort of go to, you know, what you would be like in those situations. And while it's Anna's story and what she does for her daughter, I love the the other part of the movie is that uh, Izzy is a budding teenager and she has a romance going on and yeah. discovering herself. I thought, wow, that is such a great balance. And then she, of course, is the reality to you know racism and, and discrimination. Oh and yeah, it's, it's just and it's really it was really sad when her would be boyfriend just kind of like dismissed her in front of her mother. Yes, yeah. I mean, that's that's. That was one of my favorite elements of the story, and it came in a little bit after. And um, Andrew's wife is also a producer on the film, and she kind of worked story with him. And that was one of her ideas was, let's see Izzy being just a teenager who's, you know, she's a pretty young teenager. And let's just see her having this life juxtaposed against this kid, Ethan, who has all this privilege and is like, can go any school he won't go to any school he wants to, is in this like really rich, nice house. And she has to kind of explain, you know, how she knows his picture, how she knows him, all of those things. I really thought it kind of just helped you to see, you know, Izzy's just, a, she's just a teenager. She's just a little kid and she just, you know, wants to be a kid. I loved that part of it as well. 
and shooting in Warsaw, Indiana, I just kept thinking of that John Mellencamp song, you know, Jack. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because they kept going to get ice cream. They were swimming. And I just thought, wow, oh my like, gosh. Do they even places like that exist. And there it is in the film. What a great setting. It looks like that in real life. And the community couldn't have been more helpful. I mean, um, there were, I think you saw in the film, there were some police officers and things like that. Those were, those were Warsaw police officers. I mean, we just like, the community walk, welcomed us in and it really was just like that idyllic. It looked like, you know, just small town USA. And it was just this beautiful, beautiful, great, fun little town. And actually production, um, my, my whole family came out. My husband is the assistant director and then production allowed for my children to come out because we were there for the whole summer. And it was just like, they were just like, what is this place? Like they loved it. It was so it's great. <laughs> yeah, it really was. It really was. Such kind, awesome people. Really, really great experience there. And then tell me about taking your movie to the New York Latino Film Festival. How was that experience? God, it was just such a great experience. You know, I can't say enough about the New York Latino Film Festival and about HBO, frankly. Um, one of the biggest barriers that we had in the film was that there's not a name in it. You know, there's not like a huge star in the film. And Andrew, he could have, you know, reached out and he had the ability to, but he he really wanted to sort of elevate unknown talent. talent. I mean, I've been in this industry for a really long time, but there's not a ton of opportunities, not a lot of roles like this. So for him to put his faith in two unknown actors, I mean, Izzy's never worked a day in her life. This is her first film. So it was, it was really challenging. We were submitting to a lot of festivals and that was a big barrier. But the New York Latino Film Festival prides itself on elevating unknown Latino talent. And so, you know, not only did they bring us to New York, but they showcased our film in a theater in Times Square. They introduced us to the contacts at HBO. And HBO, you know, invested in a film that has unknown people in it. So they're really putting their money where their mouth is and actually elevating unknown, you know, Latinx talent, which is just huge. So, I mean, that whole experience was just incredible for the whole team, yeah. And you mentioned the term Latinx. I've never yeah. heard that term until I read the press release for your film. I never heard that term before. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be honest, you know, I'm um, I'm kind of learning and evolving too, but Latinx is sort of a gender inclusive term. So, and it's sort of like our language, Latino, it's a very masculine, feminine language, right? So Latinx is just inclusive. So however you identify, Latinx includes everybody. So I like to use it. <laughs> oh, I like it. Yeah. And tell me, is there a call to action after watching your film? You know, is there something that people can do and dreamers? Because I watched this and I felt so helpless. Yeah, you know, I think the, the biggest thing, um, and that's, that's something that Andrew has talked about, um, including in the film, you know, on the website, trying to give some sort of call to action, some places we can go. But there are so many groups that are doing um, such incredible work. Um, Border Kindness is one of them. Um, and yeah, I think the call to action really is just like, you know, reach out to those organizations that are doing that work, that are really helping people, specifically dreamers, because they were promised something and now they're having, you know, now they're having a lot of questions about what's going to happen. So I think that's really all we can do is just reach out and say, how can we help? I mean, is it money? Is it time? Is it um, visibility? You know, whatever we can do. I think is the key. So while I was growing up here in Las Vegas, uh, and I wanted to go to film school, I wanted to be a director. Yeah. And a producer. I ended up going to UNLV's film school, you know, the very, oh, great. Uh, yeah. but I, I used to write for catalogs to go to USC, UCLA, you know, seventh grade, all yeah. the way through high school. But the college I wanted to go to was CalArts. And I understand that you were accepted. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it was. <laughs> well, um, I was accepted. It's a really kind of a sad story. So I was raised by a single mother. Um, she had, we had, there were four of us in our home and, um, I was, I was accepted into CalArts and it was just a huge dream of mine. They, it was a voice pro, they didn't have a musical theater program at the time. So I got into their voice program, um, but it was expensive. So we did everything we could to try to raise the money. I got all the federal aid, everything I could. And my mom, um, it was really heartbreaking. She had to sit down and basically tell me like, we just can't afford the rest of it, we just can't afford for you to go. So um, I get emotional thinking about it. So I couldn't, so I couldn't go, I just couldn't afford it. But 
you know, silver lining, I, a couple months later, I auditioned for the Broadway company of Rent in an open call, and I booked it. So had I been going to CalArts, I wouldn't have been able to do the Broadway company of Rent. So it all ended up working out, but... But you know, those are re- that's those are real stories. I really couldn't go because I couldn't afford it. it I want to go to CalArts because they based on your work, not your grades. Because I was a C student, yeah. you know, and there was no way. I oh, could- I was, I was terrible. All I cared about was theater and drama and you know music and film, and that's so. It wasn't that I didn't have the ability to do it. I just didn't care about any of the studies, and so yeah, that's what I loved about CalArts too. I couldn't get into any other college. And I was gonna say you did Rent, which is my all-time favorite, and oh, Rent, awesome. I career was doing the junket for the rent movie yeah so oh amazing oh wow that had all the original company in it too right it did except yeah. one yeah except yeah. one um not daphne daphne Dario wasn't dawson original. wasn't the original she was the no daphne rubin vega was the original he thought she was too old for the part so she didn't want to do it but yeah. everybody else was there i mean talk about a junket. that was one of the highlights so how fun awesome Well, Erica, thank you so much for talking to me today. And your movie premieres on HBO this weekend. And that's got to be exciting. Very uh, exciting. And what's next for you? What are you doing next? Uh, Well, I just shot a couple episodes of NBC's Indebted. It's a sitcom with Fran Drescher, but they just wrapped. So we don't know what's happening with that, if it's coming back. And I'm working on a film with Renee Victor. She was in Coco and on the show Vida. And then just, you know, looking forward to new opportunities. Really excited. Well, when Las Vegas reopens, Erica, you have to come visit us. Oh, yes, for sure. I definitely will. It's kid-friendly. I'll bring the kids. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks again for talking to Awesome. Me. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Now i got to figure out how to turn this off. Yeah, me too. I'm talking <laughs> to Andrew in 30 minutes. <laughs> He's oh, right good. after you. So. Oh, good. Tell Is him I said anything, anything interesting I should ask him that there's no way I could know? You know, just the kind of... Oh, God, I'm trying to think of something. Like a particular... He doesn't like surprises. Like a screen, like... <laughs> Like he couldn't shoot somewhere or a, a, a local actor messed something. I mean, just something like, how would you know that? You know? Oh, you know, I think, um, I'm trying to think of when we were there, him trying to get all those extras into, we, we used all local townspeople for, for the extras, but I'm trying to think of a good story that you could tell. It was like two years ago that we shot it. So I've like really blanked. And this whole, the last, I don't know about you, but the last two months, I'm sort of like, Where's oh, my brain? Oh, me too. I just like, I was one. a minute late to this interview because I put mascara in my contact lens and I was like, <laughs> ah, trying to take my contact. I was like, I want to visit Warsaw just to go to that cool bar that you guys shot in. Oh <laughs> my God, it was the best. Yeah, okay, so this is a good story. Um, and I know if he'll like it or not, but we were shooting this film. We needed to shoot some background noise of... Well, I don't want to give anything away, but of someone coming for one of the characters. And so our sound guys... And our, our art production team were sort of like putting, and everything was just so, we were just putting everything together. So he puts his mic up and he, we're all sitting there having a drink after the shoot and he comes in and he's just like screaming like, get down Max, get down Max, trying to act like the police officer and all of us just like lost our minds, started cracking up. So they couldn't use any of that footage. <laughs> so yeah, it was really fun. I'll mention that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks awesome. again and uh, stay safe and we'll talk again soon. Thanks, you too. Stay safe. Bye now. Darling, 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 the future has long gone by, and the past will never happen. We have only this, our one forever, so small, so infinite, so brief, so vast.